What is going on Trash Talkers? We're back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're going to be giving you our season preview and record predictions for the New York Giants in the 2021 NFL season. All that and much more coming your way right now! Hey, Trash Talkers, it's Mike here. Over 93% of you who view our show each and every day are not subscribed to the channel. If you could hit that red subscribe button, it would help us out tremendously, and it is completely free for you guys. If you want to stay up to date with our daily content, then click that bell icon and you will be notified every time we go live. Nick and I both really appreciate you subscribing to the channel, and we can't wait to keep making more daily content for you. All right, Nick, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, we're going to be going through all 32 NFL teams doing a season preview and record prediction. Today's team is the New York Giants. Yesterday, we talked about the Dallas Cowboys, so it's only fitting we continue with their NFC East rivals. Now, I want to start off as we normally do with the signings, the key additions for this team. Starting off with Leonard Williams being re-signed to a three-year deal. John Ross coming over from the Cincinnati Bengals. Mike Glennon coming in as a QB mentor for Daniel Jones. Kyle Rudolph being uh, coming in as a nice tight end two option. Kenny Galladay coming in as the prized free agent acquisition. Adoree Jackson coming in to help this defense. And then you have the rookies Kadarius Toney and Aziz Ojolari coming in to really bolster this team in ways that we didn't think were possible, but here we are, the New York Giants. What is your favorite signing or addition that they made this offseason? Without a doubt, it's Kenny Galladay. What this guy can do for this offense is going to be noticed right off the bat. He is such a big body. He's such a big weapon. When he's healthy, he's one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, and he's really going to light it up with Daniel Jones. I think this is going to be the year we finally see Daniel Jones come into his own. And it's because he has so much talent around him, but none bigger than Kenny Galladay. This guy is sure fire. He has extremely good hands. His length is going to be great for those 50-50 balls. I think that he is really going to come through for this team and help them squeak out a couple wins that they otherwise would not have gotten. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really like the the signing of Kenny Galladay. Obviously, he was a prized free agent that many teams were vying for. But nonetheless, uh, I'm going to talk about Adoree Jackson here. I think Adoree Jackson coming in as their cornerback number two opposite James Bradbury. James Bradbury was on pace for possibly defensive player of the year last year for his absolute incredible play under Joe Judge coming into this New York Giants system and just being an outstanding CB1. But the problem is, is that they had to let go of a young cornerback earlier and, you know, they really never found somebody to play opposite Bradbury. No, nobody to compliment him. So now you bring in a Dory Jackson, a veteran presence at the cornerback position, a, an accomplished veteran at that, coming from Mike Vrabel's system. Mike Vrabel, who knows Joe Judge very well, very similar systems that they ran, coming from the Bill Belichick tree of uh, coaching. And at this point, I think Adoree Jackson is going to really bolster the coverage on this team. It gives them a nice one-two punch at cornerback because beyond these two, there's not a whole hell of a lot to be thrilled about. So without Adoree Jackson, not too sure what they would have been doing. Okay, and now we're going to take a look at their key losses for this offseason. And we take a look. There's only three that really stood out to us as major losses for this team. They had to cut guard Kevin Zeitler, an aging guard that they got way back when. Golden Tate, the wide receiver, was released from the team. And then David Mayo, the productive linebacker. Nick, which one of these really stood out to you? David Mayo, to me, is a huge loss for them because when you look at the the team and their the way they're structured, their linebackers are the weakest part of this team. And when you remove one of their best tacklers in David Mayo and you just leave Blake Martinez there, 
you got some holes on the outside, you're going to need a guy like David Mayo to really help you out because you're going to face some tight ends and you're not going to be able to cover them without a guy like that. I just think that you know Joe Judge has got his work cut out for him trying to groom some young linebackers to get up to par from where David Mayo was I just don't think we're going to see someone replace David Mayo this season it's going to be a, a noticeable hole on this defense yeah I, I agree with that I'm actually going to take Kevin Zeitler here uh, and the reason I wouldn't have taken Golden Tate is because they just absolutely obliterated their wide receiver room with talent so uh, the loss of Kevin Zeitler, when you take a look at the New York Giants holes, none bigger than their offensive line, in my opinion. Nate Solder is basically the only p position player on the offensive line that I think can hold their own. Outside of him, not too much to be thrilled about. And Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley are going to be running for their lives because at this point, the, the Giants have not addressed offensive line enough to be thrilled about where the state is for their franchise. They focus too much on the wide receiver position instead of getting some of those offensive line free agents that you see teams like the New England Patriots are hoarding in free agency. So uh, I, I would definitely say that the loss of Zeitler is compounded by the fact that they couldn't get any top free agents. But now we're going to take a look at their schedule. We're going to go through their record predictions with the signings and additions in mind. Let's get let's start taking a look at who they have week one. We have the Denver Broncos coming in to face the New York Giants. And I think that the New York Giants are going to handle this game pretty simply. You know, they have the offensive firepower to absolutely destroy this Broncos team. The Broncos, you know, they're still getting used to each other, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Von Miller's coming back from injury. We got Bradley Chubb, who's done really well. But outside of that, the cornerbacks have to get used to the new Vic Fangio system. That includes Kyle Fuller. You know, they're great coverage corners, but it's week one. Anything can happen. I think the Giants offense is going to be clicking on all cylinders. That's what Daniel Jones is working on with Kadarius Toney, Kenny Galladay, all of these guys right now. He's looking to get this offense ready to go, and I think they're going to just come out swinging for the fences week one. And in week two, when they go face the Washington football team in D.C., I think that the Washington football team is just going to be a little too much. Their defense got stronger this offseason. Their offense got better by adding Curtis Samuel and Adam Humphreys with Ryan Fitzpatrick leading the way. I think that they're going to be a little too much in week two, and I think the Giants are going to have a little bit of growing pains. I'm taking the Washington football team. On a Thursday game, no less, the second game, the second week of the season being a short week is is a tough one. But we take a look at the at week three. We have the Atlanta Falcons facing off at the New York Giants, and I believe that the Giants are going to take this one again. the The Atlanta Falcons are in a tough spot right now. They are right up against the the salary cap. They're trying to move on from Julio Jones again. Go take a look at our videos on more from that saga that continues in Atlanta, but. The Atlanta Falcons with Matt Ryan under center still can compete and can still do some things offensively. But defensively speaking, until I see Arthur Smith and his his new coaching staff really produce something, I do not believe in this defense. And outside of Grady Jarrett, there's not really much that I'm thrilled about defensively. So and when you take Kyle Pitts at number four and continue to let the defense fall by the wayside, I have to say that a team like the New York Giants is going to jump all over that. And then week four, the Giants make their way to the Superdome in New Orleans, facing the New Orleans Saints. And I think that the Giants are going to get the better of the Saints. They just have a better offense. Their defense is better. I think they're all around the better team. And Jameis Winston's still going to be going through some growing pains learning this offense. I think that the G-Men are going to get the better of the Saints in this one. All right, going into week five against the vaunted Dallas Cowboys, going into Jerry World. We have the Dallas Cowboys hosting the New York Giants for the first time this season. And a 3-1 and one record coming into this into this uh, game is, is nothing to scoff at. The Dallas Cowboys were struggling, as you saw in our video from yesterday. The Giants come in and absolutely dominate offensively. The, the Cowboys defense has not improved vastly enough to be able to compete with Kadarius Toney, Kenny Galladay, John Ross, Kyle Rudolph, Evan Ingram, Saquon Barkley on and on and on and on. But I do believe that the Giants will have their number. This is a divisional matchup. The Cowboys will play them extremely difficult, extremely hard. Look for this to be a very competitive matchup, but I do believe that the Giants will come out victorious. 
Then moving into week six, we have the G-Men on a three-game win streak. But now you have the Los Angeles Rams coming to MetLife Stadium. And I think this is where the Rams end that win streak. I think that the Rams have just as good of an offense as the Giants, if not a little bit better. And the defense is just going to take care of Kenny Galladay and Saquon Barkley. I think that they're a little too strong on the defensive line and that secondary. They're going to be able to handle the G-Men in this one. Next up, week seven, we have the Carolina Panthers visiting the New York Giants in MetLife Stadium. And I actually have an upset here with the Carolina Panthers coming out on top. I believe that the, the Giants are going to go through through some rough patches. I believe that Daniel Jones is going to continue to have his slow progression uh, coming into his own. And, you know, even with the immense talent around him, those, those guys are going to get banged up. I just see the Panthers as a trap game because the Panthers got so much better and nobody is talking about it. The addition of Sam Darnold under center is going to be massive. Bringing back Christian McCaffrey fully healthy is going to be massive. On top of the fact that maybe they lost Curtis Samuel, but they were able to replace him and have other receivers stay here like Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson was able to stay in Carolina and really help this offense. I think their offense is elite. I think their defense is extremely solid. They're going to play the Giants really tough. I look for this game to be an upset. The Panthers will win. Now in week eight, the Giants have to make their way to Arrowhead Stadium and face the Kansas City Chiefs. And this is going to be the biggest test of Daniel Jones's career. This is where we're really going to see whether he's going to be the guy or whether they're going to have to start looking for the next franchise quarterback. And to me, the Kansas City Chiefs are just going to be a little too much. I think this is going to be a, a shootout, and I think it's really going to come down to the last couple of, of series, but I think that the Chiefs are going to have the defense to take care of the Giants. I don't think Daniel Jones is going to have what it takes to clutch it up and win this game for the G-Men. I think the Chiefs got this one, and now we see the Giants on a three-game losing streak. Yeah, so th this is a tough turnaround for the Giants, but... Luckily for them, they are facing the Las Vegas Raiders in the week before their bye week, and they have everything to put out into this game. I think that the Giants hosting the Raiders at MetLife, the Raiders have to take a red eye across the country. It's not going to be pretty for them. The Giants are going to win this one handily. Their offensive firepower is going to be too much for the lackluster Raiders defense. Then we have them coming out of the bye in week 11, but they have to go to Tampa Bay. They have to go to the reigning Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers home and beat Tom Brady. But you know who Tom Brady's kryptonite is? The G-Men, the New York Giants, the team that has beaten him twice in the Super Bowl. But this isn't the same G-Men, is it? It's really not. I don't think that the Giants have the offense to keep up with Tom Brady and this high-powered offense with the Buccaneers. And I think the Buccaneers' defense is going to be a little too much for the offensive line of the Giants to handle. I think the Buccaneers are going to get the better of the Giants coming out of their bye week. Yeah, Michael Strahan, OCU Minora. They're, they're not walking through that door. And don't forget, JPP's a little salty, so he's going to have something extra for the Giants on this one. Moving into week 12, we're coming in with a 5-5 five and five record. And the, the Eagles are coming in as a division rival, but they have lost so much this offseason that it's hard to fi find them as a competitor in this one. I do believe that the Giants are going to win this one pretty easily. I believe that the Eagles have a very tough road ahead of them, especially with the Giants who got so much better this offseason. I think that this is going to be an easy game for them. In week 13, the New York Giants go visit the Miami Dolphins in in Hard Rock Stadium. And to me, this is as good of a matchup as it gets this season. To me, these guys are perfectly matched for each other. I believe that their offenses are equal, their defenses are equal, and it's really going to come down to scheming and coaching. And to me, the Giants are going to get the better of the Miami Dolphins in this one. I think the Giants have what it takes to put up a few more points than the than the Dolphins. I think this is going to be a game where Saquon Barkley really comes into play. If you look at the Dolphins' defense, their, their run defense really got light this offseason. And to me, Saquon Barkley is going to take full advantage of that. He's going to have a big game in Week 13. Absolutely. And then moving on to Week 14, the Giants will have to go from Miami to Los Angeles, a very tough road trip for them going from New York to Florida to California. I think that they're going to end up struggling on the back end of this road trip. 
and uh, I think the Chargers will win this game. I think that they're just going to be so tired, so exhausted from the constant travel that they've had to do. I think that the Chargers are going to be ready for them. Their defense will have come into their own throughout the season. Char you know, Justin Herbert will have been able to continue on with this offense the way it, it's constructed, and he'll be able to take apart this Giants defense really easily. Now in week 15, we have the Giants back at home facing their division rival, the Dallas Cowboys, for the second time this season. And we had the Giants taking the first game, but in the second game, the Cowboys are going to fix up the, the mistakes they made in the first game, and they're going to get the better of the Giants in this one. Moving on to week 16, the Giants will be going to Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, facing off against the Eagles and I actually think that the Eagles are going to get this one. I think the Eagles, you know what? These are tough divisional matchups. And you can say that the Giants are superior, but at the end of the day, these are matchups where these teams know everything about each other. The Eagles got an early look at them, and they understand what it's going to be like. I believe that the New York Giants are in for a rude awakening with the Philadelphia Eagles. Look for the Eagles to play upset card here. Uh, I'm taking the Eagles. Well, the Eagles may have gotten the better of the Giants in Week 16, but in Week 17, when the Giants go face the Chicago Bears, it's going to be an absolute nightmare for Chicago. The G-Men are going to come roaring back and absolutely obliterate Chicago in this one. There is nothing that Chicago's defense or offense can do to keep up with this high-powered team, and the Giants are really going to put themselves back on track, make a playoff run. Absolutely. And and coming off that high, they are continuing to fight for a playoff spot, whether it's for the division or for a wild card spot. Either way, they have to win this game. Losing to Washington football team in week two, they are not happy with where they are. The New York Giants have to win this game, and they will. They're going to win at home week 18 for the first time ever, and they're going to absolutely dominate the Washington football team look for the Giants to really come out swinging and win a wild card spot in the NFC. So now this puts the Giants at 9-8 and eight at the season. And in our previous video, we had the Dallas Cowboys at 10-7, and seven, which means the Giants are going to be looking to get a spot in the wild card. They're going to be looking at that 5, 6, or 7 spot, and hopefully they can get one. But time will tell, and you'll have to stick with the series to see where the Giants land and see if they make the playoffs. Absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.